with everyone. It's 4 o'clock in the East with just 83 days left to go before the election. There is an almost audible crack in the fortress of tired old arguments and mistruths that make up Donald Trump's political playbook. Everywhere you look, there are inescapable signs that not only is he now, not only is the disgrace twice impeached for so passionately defended himself from such slander yesterday. More than a thousand military veterans, families, caregivers, and survivors signed on to an open letter in support. Quote, J.D. Vance's recent comments attacking Governor Walz's service record are disrespectful and deeply disappointing, especially given Vance's own service, which we are also profoundly grateful for. The letter obtained by USA Today reads, Quote, but given Donald Trump's long record of expressing disdain for service members, veterans, and their families, it is unsurprising that his running mate has stooped to such lows. Joining our conversation, host of the Independent Americans podcast, the founder of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, Paul Rykoff, who is smiling for the first time since we've had him in regular rotation on this program, plus retired U.S. Marine Corps Lieutenant Colonel and founder of Democratic Majority Action Pack. Amy McGrath is here. Um, Paul, what's what's always amazing about a Trump story is that if you tell it without the full picture, you, you lose what's really most audacious about it. And the full picture is that um, reporting from The Atlantic and several folks who have written books about it have revealed in no uncertain terms, and Sarah Matthews and others have confirmed it, that what Donald Trump believes about dead soldiers, men and women who gave everything to this country, is that they are, quote, suckers and losers. It is also reported and reported and corroborated at the highest levels of the United States military that Trump is disgusted by men and women who've been injured in the line of duty, and he doesn't want to see them at any public events. So what is this attack? by the most unpopular vice presidential pick in American political history on Governor Walls really about? It's about politics. It's about the oldest, dirtiest, and recently most effective trick that the Republicans have had in their book. This swift boating, as it's been called, worked against John Kerry. It hurt him. He had an honorable term of service, but Republicans kept uh, pushing a lie and, and pushing attacks, and it worked. And we saw this with Max Cleland. We've seen this with others. So they're pushing it because they think it's going to work. But here's what's different. Here's why I'm smiling. Because energy is contagious. And that's what this country is feeling right now around Harris and around Walsh. But so is command climate. And what Tim Walsh and, 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 and uh, Kamala Harris are bringing forward is a tone of respect of honor, of integrity. And even in, in Tim's response, and, and as I've been open, I've known Tim for almost 20 years. I think he's an honorable man. He served his country, was also tenacious on the Hill on the House Veterans Affairs Committee. What he did was when he responded, he defended himself, and then he went high. He didn't actually counterattack against Vance like he could have. He went high when they went low. Now, I hope that works this time. It, it's been a struggle for Democrats in the past, but I think it's, it's a strategic move, but it's also in response to what the country wants. They're tired of, of negativity. They're tired of threats of violence, and they're tired of weird. And what, what Walsh and Harris are offering is honor and respect and a bit of cool, which is also very important. I think that's part of what you're seeing in this energy that's flowing around the country right now. And I firmly believe you should never denigrate another person's service record. Anyone brave enough to put on that uniform for our great country, including my opponent, I just have a few simple words. Thank you for your service and sacrifice. Paul Rykoff, um, I know when I ask you to tell me what the military thinks, it's, it's the, 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 the obvious um, Inaccuracy, the question is that it's not a monolith. They have as many different views as all Americans. But how personal is this, right? Like, how, how personal is this to have this sort of achievement of the, the vice presidential nominee on both sides is a veteran, and, they're, and one is attacking the other, Paul? I think it's very personal. I mean, it, it feels like a, like a fight in the family, right? And you, you hope that you don't see family fighting. I mean, we can joke about Army versus Navy, but this is the nastiness of our political environment manifest in a whole new way. And we knew it was coming. I mean, I've been on this network for 20 years, and we knew there'd be a day where there'd be VP candidates, and eventually there'll be presidential candidates. And I've said this before, I'll say it again. I, I hope we can have kind of a ceasefire 
we can have a safe space where people don't attack each other's military record. And we as veterans set a higher bar for our politics and leadership. And I think that's a deeper issue here too, Nicole. This is about character and it's also about being a role model. This is about what it means to really be tough in America, what it really means to be a man as a leader in America, right? Because now you've got two guys mm -hmm. on the right that are the anti-role models, that are people I don't want my young boys to be like. They don't have honor, they don't have integrity. They, they, they're bullies, they push down other people. And then you got Tim Walsh, who's a teacher and, and who's a coach and who's positive and is vulnerable and loves his kids. And he's a positive male role model. And I think in many ways, our country's really been looking for that. And that's something that I think is going to pan out over the course of the next couple of months. and will especially resonate with military and veterans community members because they want character and they want leadership and leaders who lead by example. It's so, it makes me cry that the, the ticket talking about childless cat ladies is, you're, you're right, the ticket you don't want your kids to see.